Hello everyone, I am Dr. Vaishnavi and today in this session I am going to teach you about how to do an examination of the nose and the paranasal sinuses. So we begin our examination in a systematic way where we are going to describe the examination into different parts. So we will be describing first the nose in relation to the external framework, then we will be going to the anterior part of the examination of the nose which we call it as anterior rhinoscopy, then we will be examining the posterior part of the nose and the nasopharynx with the help of posterior rhinoscopic procedure. We are also going to learn about the different structures and the anatomy in the nose by doing a diagnostic nasal endoscopy and finally we will complete it by examining the paranasal sinuses as well. So today with me I have a patient. So before I examine the patient, I will always take the consent of the patient to touch him or to examine the patient. So hello, I am Dr. Vaishnavi. I will not cause you any pain, but to assess what's the pathology or what's the problem in you, I would like to uh, examine you. If you have any pain, please do let me know and raise your hand. I will stop my examination then. Are you ready for the examination? Yes. Okay. So having taken the consent, the first step begins with inspection of the nose. So whenever we begin, don't use your hand. We, we should have a good inspectory finding before we go into the details of what is happening inside. Now, when we want to inspect the nose, either you should have a bright light in front of you so that you can examine the pathologies which are there or you could use something like a headlight. So this headlight will help you to illuminate the area that is of focus or interest to you. So now you see when I put the headlight, I have a good focus on the area that I want to see. But when I don't have light, obviously I can miss some minor pathologies. So we inspect the nose for the position. So where is the nose put located in relation to the entire cranial cavity? The nose should occupy the middle one third of the facial skeleton. So upper one third, middle one third and lower one third. If you have got a small nose or an elongated nose, it is disproportionate to the face and such people may come to you for correction, requesting their nose to be either shortened or lengthened to make them look, um, make it look beautiful. So it has to be symmetric in relation to the facial skeleton. So the first thing that you look is, is it in the midline? Is it occupying the middle one third of your face? That is about the position. Then you're going to look for the color of the skin on the nose. The color on the skin of the nose has to match with the color on the other surfaces of your facial skeleton. Now you could have conditions like vestibulitis or an abscess that could lead to facial cellulitis. So when there is facial cellulitis, you will have redness on the nose, you will have redness around the uh, nose. So you are going to compare the skin of the nose color with the rest of the body and see if there is any redness, if there is any crusting, if there is any scarring because of any previous surgery, if there is any dilated blood vessel. Sometimes you can have small, 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 tiny spots which we call it as hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasias. So you are going to look this on the external nose. Now after looking at the color over the skin, uh, over the skin of the nose the next step will be look will be to look for any swellings that you see any obvious swellings are there on the nose now in this patient we obviously don't have any swellings that are visible but we could have swellings like a sebaceous cyst like a dermoid we could have a rhinophyma where there is excessive thickening of the skin of the nose because of the sebaceous gland hypertrophy we can have acne we can have pustules we can have crusting we can have different sorts of swellings congenital or acquired so the first thing is to look the color the second thing is to look for the surface for any swellings or any tumors the third one is to look for any congenital abnormalities or acquired abnormalities the congenital abnormalities that we can have can range from aplasia so this is the nose if there is no development of the nose, it will be very, very small. So when it is small or it is non-developed, we call it as aplasia. It can be a partial aplasia or it can be a complete aplasia. So partial aplasia is a condition where the nose is only partially not formed and complete aplasia is completely you will not have any nasal cavity. The next one is to look is there any stenosis of the nerve. So you can see there is a wide opening of the nasal cavity. If there is no wide opening of the nasal cavity, if there is any stenosis or there is narrowing that will have to be looked for. Then you will have certain congenital conditions like glioma, meningeal, dermoid. 
so these will present as a fluctuant swelling on the surface of the nose because they are herniating from the cranial cavity into the nasal cavity especially if it is a meningioma or meningocele or a meningoencephalocele so meningocele meningoencephalocele glioma or a dermoid should be looked for on the external surface of the nose and acquired abnormalities like a deviated nasal septum so they say where goes the septum there goes the nose so if there is an internal deviation of the septum which divides the nose into two halves you can have an external deformity as well now there are two types of deformities which you can have you can have a deviated nose or you can have a crooked nose what is a deviated nose now if this is your point this is called as your nasion what is nasion the point where the frontal bone meets the nasal bone so this is your right left nasal bone this is your right nasal bone so you see the nasal bones on each side are meeting the frontal bone so this point in the midline where the frontal bone meets the nasal bone this is called as the nasion so if the nasion is in the midline and if the tip is in the midline so if you see if both are in the midline and if rest of the dorsum of the nose meaning if this portion has got deviated to the right or to the left we call it as a deviated nose now what is the definition of a crooked nose crooked nose is a condition where the nasion is in the midline but the tip has got deviated so if you get a deviation of the tip because it's not in the midline if it has got deviated we call that condition as a deviated nose so on inspection you will not just look for congenital abnormalities like a meningocele meningoencephalocele glioma or a dermoid you will also look for acquired abnormalities as well one of which is a deviated nasal septum you will look for crooked nose you will look for deviated nose and a saddle nose what is the definition of a saddle nose then now you see this dorsum is straight if you see a depression here if it there is a depression that you see here we call it as a saddle nose deformity so this saddle nose deformity can occur because of various causes which we will not discuss here but looking for a saddle nose deformity will help you come to some differential diagnosis then you are going to look for is there any excessive projection on the dorsum of the nose so if there is excessive projection on the dorsum of the nose we call it as hump nose so these things will be looked for on inspectory findings now after having looked for the color of the skin the surface uh, the surface of on the nose of the skin and looking for congenital and ab acquired abnormalities the next test will be to look for the position of the nose in relation to the facial skeleton now we've understood what is the normal anatomical position of the nose in relation to the facial skeleton but there are certain pathologies like if there is a sinusitis of the maxillary sinus the patient will have swelling of the cheek so your focus should not be only on the nose but also to look at the surrounding structure if there is any swellings over the maxillary sinus swellings over the eyelids swelling over the forehead this should be looked for now whenever there is a frontal mucosal whenever there is a frontal sinus mucosal there will be proptosis of the eye and outward deviation of the eye so inspecting all these findings should be done before you proceed to touch a patient so a quick recall of what you have to do in your inspection is first look for the color of the skin the surface on the skin look for congenital and acquired abnormalities and the position of the nose in relation to the rest of the facial skeleton